Let us first start with the preliminary test. Wash all the apparatus with water. Test 1. Let us find out the nature of the salt. On observing the salt, we can notice that the salt is slightly moist. This indicates it absorbs moisture from the atmosphere. Therefore, we can say the salt is hygroscopic in nature. The salt may contain chlorides or nitrates of copper, nickel, cobalt, magnesium, calcium or zinc. Test 2. Observe the color of the salt. The color of the salt is green. The salt may contain nickel or copper radical. B. Let us now perform the dry test for cations. Test 1. Heating in a dry test tube. Take a small quantity of the given salt in a dry test tube and heat it. Observe the changes taking place. There is a colored residue at the bottom of the test tube. The colored residue indicates that copper, cobalt, chromium, nickel, manganese or iron radical may be present in the salt. Test 2. Charcoal Cavity Test Make a shallow cavity on the surface of the charcoal. Take a pinch of the salt. Add to it a pinch of solid sodium carbonate and a drop of water. Mix it properly. Fill this salt in the charcoal cavity. Hold this charcoal piece with a pair of tongs. Using a blowpipe, direct the reducing flame on the charcoal cavity to heat the salt in the cavity. Observe the changes taking place. A colored residue is obtained. This indicates the presence of nickel, cobalt, magnesium or ferric radical. Test 3. Flame test. First, we shall clean the platinum wire. Dip the platinum wire in concentrated hydrochloric acid. Then heat the wire in a slow oxidizing flame. Now, take a pinch of the given salt. Add a few drops of concentrated hydrochloric acid to moisten the salt. Dip the clean platinum wire in it and hold it in the outer part of the oxidizing flame. Observe the color of the flame. There is no distinct color to the flame. This indicates that copper, barium, calcium, strontium and lead may be absent. Test 4. Borax bead test. This test is performed if the salt is colored. Make a small loop at the end of a clean platinum wire. Heat it and dip it in borax powder so that some powder sticks to the loop. Heat it again till a transparent bead is obtained. Now, touch the bead to a small crystal of the salt. Heat it again in an oxidizing flame for a few seconds. Stop heating and observe the color of the bead. It appears reddish brown. This shows that the salt may contain nickel radical. Test 5. Test for ammonium radical. Take a pinch of the salt on a piece of filter paper. Add a few drops of dilute sodium hydroxide solution on it. Fold the paper and smell it gently. There is no characteristic smell of ammonia gas. This shows that ammonium radical is absent in the salt. After performing the dry test, we conclude that the probable radical present in the salt is nickel. Now, we shall prepare the original solution of the salt to perform the wet test. Take a pinch of the salt in a small beaker. Add about one and half test tube of water and boil it. The compound does not dissolve completely. Transfer this solution in a clean test tube and centrifuge it. Transfer the upper clear transparent green colored solution in a clean beaker. Discard the residue settled at the bottom. This is called the original solution. Now we shall perform wet tests 
using this original solution. Basic radicals are classified into six groups depending upon their reactions with specific reagents. With these specific reagents, cations form precipitates of their salts with specific colors and solubilities. Test 1. To detect group 1. Take about 3 to 4 drops of the original solution in a clean test tube. Add 3 to 4 drops of dilute hydrochloric acid. Do you observe a white precipitate being formed? There is no white precipitate formed. This shows that group 1 is absent. Test 2. To detect group 2. Add about 3 to 4 drops of the original solution in a clean test tube. Add few drops of dilute hydrochloric acid. Warm the solution. Using Kipps apparatus, pass hydrogen sulfide gas through the solution. Do you observe a colored precipitate formed? There is no colored precipitate formed. This shows that group 2 is absent. Test 3 to detect group 3rd A. Take about 3 to 4 drops of the original solution in a clean test tube. Add a pinch of solid ammonium chloride. Add concentrated ammonium hydroxide solution till alkaline. Test the solution with red litmus paper. The paper turns blue, indicating that the solution has stirred alkaline. What do you observe? There is no precipitate formed. This shows that group 3A is absent. Test 3 to detect group 3B. Take about 3 to 4 drops of the original solution in a clean test tube. Add a pinch of solid ammonium chloride. Concentrated ammonium hydroxide solution till alkaline. Test the solution with red litmus paper. The paper turns blue, indicating that the solution has turned alkaline. Using Kipps apparatus, pass hydrogen sulfide gas through the solution. Do you observe a precipitate? There is a black colored precipitate formed. This indicates the salt may contain nickel or cobalt radical. Now we shall analyze the original solution for detection of group 3rd B. Take few drops of the original solution in a clean test tube. Add a few drops of dilute sodium hydroxide solution. What do you observe? A light green precipitate is formed. This indicates the presence of nickel radical. Let us now perform the confirmatory test for nickel radical. Take a few drops of the original solution in a test tube. Add a few drops of ammonium hydroxide. a few drops of dimethyl glyoxim. We see the formation of a scarlet red precipitate. This confirms the presence of nickel radical. Now, let us tabulate the result. The given salt contains nickel as a basic radical.